morning. Uh, I am Foreign Minister of Poland. I've just chaired the meeting, Aria Forumala meeting of the um, uh, religious freedom and in, in armed conflict particularly. I am together with participants of that meeting representing UK, uh, Lord uh, Ahmad of Wimbledon, UK Prime Minister's Special Envoy on Freedom of Religion or Belief, and Samuel Brownback, Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom. So we took part in that meeting, which is important for these three countries, also other countries. Today is 22nd of August, and for the first time, we honored the International Day commemorating the victims of acts of violence based on religion or belief. This day has been designed unanimously by the United Nations General Assembly on the initiative of Poland, supported by cross-national group of like-minded countries. Let me uh, name them, Brazil, Canada, Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Nigeria, Pakistan, and the United States. Promotion of religious freedom and protection of people belonging to religious minorities constitute one of the priorities of Polish foreign policy in the face of growing threats of terrorism, extremism, mutual understanding and cooperation among ethnic, cultural, and religious groups is more important than ever. A state of religious freedom worldwide is alarming, is very bad. It is estimated that one third of the world's population suffer some form of religious persecution, with Christians being the most persecuted group. According to recent reports, reports every day 11 persons are being killed as a result of religion repression. As part of today's commemorations of the International Day, Poland organized and opened the Security Council Area Formula meeting on the safety and security of religious minorities in armed conflict. This event uh, is coordinated, uh, co organized by Brazil, Canada, Jordan, United uh, Kingdom, and the United States. The goal of this meeting was to recognize the scale of the problem and discuss how to eliminate and prevent violence, persecution of religious minorities in conflict situation. During the meeting, participants, participants under, underlined the responsibility of the international community to protect religious minorities uh, in armed conflicts. Attention has been drawn to the importance of respecting human rights and international humanitarian law, as well as importance of interreligious uh, dialogue and humanitarian assistance. Please, Lord. Firstly, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for being here. I'd w like to firstly congratulate Poland, and in particular, Foreign Minister, your good self, for convening this very important meeting. Freedom of religion or belief is an inherent human right. When we look around the world, conflicts besiege us, and quite often where conflicts take place, it is an unfortunate consequence, but we see the reality of it, that religious communities, faith communities are suppressed, particularly minority communities. And what today's meeting illustrates is the importance for standing up for this issue, this important human right, the fundamental right that anyone should enjoy anywhere in the world. I myself, as Minister for Human Rights for the United Kingdom, but also since last year, the Prime Minister's Special Envoy for Freedom of Religion or Belief, have prioritized this particular issue. And today, during my statement, I repeated and mentioned quite specifically the commitment of our new Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, on this important priority, a priority which underlines the United Kingdom's commitment to working with like-minded partners such as Poland and the United States to ensuring that people of all faiths and none know that countries will stand with them. I have personal convictions on this particular issue. I was once asked right here at the United Nations about why I speak up strongly against anti-Semitism. And the question was posed to me that I am strong on anti-Semitism and standing up to anti-Semitism because I am a Muslim, despite being a Muslim. And I said, no, 
It's because I am a person of faith. It is because I am a Muslim that I stand up for the rights of others. Indeed, the biggest test we have is when we stand up for the rights and beliefs of others. And today's meeting illustrates the commitment and the conviction that many countries have for doing just that. There is a long road ahead of us, but I assure you on behalf of the United Kingdom, on behalf of our Prime Minister, and as we've illustrated today with the announcement of additional funding to ensure we support freedom of religion or belief, we will continue. We will continue to raise the voice, to be the voice for the voiceless around the world to ensure that every person, no matter what their faith or belief, enjoys this inherent fundamental human right. Thank you. <clears throat> Name's Sam Brown, back ambassador at large for religious freedom. I want to particularly thank the uh, uh, Polish administration, uh, the uh, leadership that you provide on this topic has just been fantastic and we're, uh, we're delighted uh, to be a part of it. Unfortunately, the uh, state of religious freedom around the world is bad and it's getting worse. No problem. Uh, I was, as I was saying that that the state of religious freedom around the world is bad and it's getting worse. According to Pew Research, 83% of the global community lives in a restricted religious environment. And that is that they cannot practice their faith freely. Uh, we find in some places around the world a, a horrific level of uh, violence uh, towards particularly religious minorities. The United States administration has been deeply concerned about this. Uh, we've held two ministerials in Washington this year, and one, one this year and one last year. We had 105 countries participating this year. We're going to continue to push this effort. Uh, we are seeking to build an alliance, an international religious freedom alliance, uh, that would push collectively and together, like-minded countries would push on the topic of religious freedom globally so that we can start getting the trend line going the other way so that the religious freedom would open up, so that the gates of religious uh, freedom would come open and that the Iron Curtain of religious persecution would come down. Uh, we are not there yet. We're gonna continue to push that. I think this day of a national day, an international day of remembrance is a key factor of moving this forward so that we can get more attention to this. And this is a basic universal human right. It is in the Declaration of Universal Human Rights. This right of religious freedom is one that's entitled to everybody, everywhere, at all times. It is important that people of all faiths stand up for everybody else's faith or people of no faith to stand up as well for this fundamental right. And I applaud the Polish uh, government and I applaud those who've signed on for this effort uh, that this would take place here today. And I hope it's not just a day of remembrance, but it's a day of action and the world community joins together to push forward for more religious freedom. Thank you. Good morning, Rafał Stańczyk, Polish Public Television. Uh, just want to ask about today's debate. What is the most sufficient way to fight discrimination of minorities? And what is the most sufficient way to support victims, victims of war and conflicts? Just to encourage them to rebuild their lives. Uh, so it was important debate. Uh, we had a group of uh, briefers from NGOs, a person who also suffered persecution based on religion. They provided their testimony. All uh, security member sta uh, states members uh, took part in the debate, also other countries. I think uh, that uh, I would mention uh, three issues. First, Preempt, preemptive actions through education and creation um, environment of tolerance. Second, it would be interreligious, interfaith dialogue in local communities, but also between churches, between denominations, which also create understanding of other way of thinking and uh, uh, raise awareness of uh, other belief. And third, accountability. So impunity, it is something which is very dangerous. If uh, perpetrators um, uh, think that they will be not 
they are not punished, then uh, we will uh, have repeated uh, um, acts of violence ag against the uh, religious minorities. We have time for one more question. Uh, question, question for Ambassador Brownback. Uh, you recently uh, said that China has declared a war on faith. Obviously, the Uyghurs, persecution of the Uyghurs, and also a growing persecution of Christians, churches are being dismantled, etc. What do you say about that? <coughs> I, I call on them to stop. Uh, they, um, the Uyghur situation is well documented by the international press. We're seeing the situation of uh, particularly the house church movement, but not exclusively that, of a number of churches being torn down, people, pastors thrown in jail. But it doesn't stop there. It also includes Tibetan Buddhism uh, that has been persecuted for decades now and continues to be. And then the Falun Gong spiritual movement, uh, many have been arrested. Uh, I, I think it, it really is something important for China to step up. Uh, and to actually follow their constitution and the UN Declaration of Human Rights and provide for religious freedom. Now, that's not the only country in the world. I mean, we cited in there, I cited, and a number of other people did too, the situation in Iran and the religious persecution that's there. Unfortunately, the problems that are taking place in Pakistan, we've seen it in places like Eritrea, uh, Russia, uh, the things that they are doing. So there's a series of places uh, but uh, really, uh, China has just gone at all of these faiths so aggressively, and, and they should not be doing this, not under their own constitution and not under the UN Declaration of Human Rights. And, and regarding, regarding Cuba, your ambassador, regarding Cuba?